There's a lot of attention on why Hamas carried out the attack on Israel now. And there's one factor America has highlighted. Here's one thing that's, uh, that's clear. Uh, we've been actively working on trying to help uh, Israel and Saudi Arabia normalize their relations. Normalize here means to establish formal ties, such as setting up embassies and creating other diplomatic and economic links. And America believes the Hamas attack may connect to this push for normalization. Now, who's opposed to that? Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran. Uh, so I think that speaks volumes. Hamas is an Islamist militant group based in Gaza. Hezbollah is an Islamist militant group based in Lebanon. Both groups are armed and funded by Iran. All three consider themselves part of a resistance to Israel. And on the Hamas attack, the UN is unequivocal. Its secretary general says nothing can justify these acts of terror. But Hamas has tried to justify the attack. It cites what it calls Israel's crimes against the Palestinians and its repeated storming of Al-Aqsa Mosque. That's a reference to the actions of Israeli police at Jerusalem's most important holy site for Muslims and for Jews. And this year has been the deadliest on record for Palestinians in the Israeli-occupied West Bank, though Israel has defended its actions throughout. Hamas will also have known its attack was almost 50 years to the day since a surprise attack by Egypt and Syria on the Jewish holy day of Yom Kippur. There was something else in Hamas's list of grievances. Normalization, that same factor that America pointed to. So let's look at this, because what's being called normalization is in fact far from normal in the region. Because for decades, most Arab states didn't recognize the state of Israel. In 2020, that started to change. The US brokered deals with the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain, in which they normalized relations with Israel. But Palestinians weren't involved. Neither the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, led by Mahmoud Abbas, nor Hamas, which controls Gaza. And they both denounced the normalization deals. At the time, BBC's Jeremy Bowen explained that the new agreement breaks a long-standing Arab consensus that the price of normal relations with Israel was independence for the Palestinians. In other words, in the eyes of its critics, normalization weakens the Palestinian cause. And now the US is brokering new normalization talks that are even more significant, this time with Saudi Arabia, one of the region's most powerful countries. And in September, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited Washington, and he expressed hope that what he called a historic peace with the Saudis was possible. I think such a peace would go a long way first to uh, advance the end of the Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, achieve reconciliation between the Islamic world and the Jewish state, and advance a genuine peace between Israel and the Palestinians. And unlike previous normalization talks, this time Palestinians have been involved, but not all Palestinians. In September, a high-level Saudi delegation visited the occupied West Bank for the first time in decades. It met Mahmoud Abbas, leader of the Palestinian Authority. Now, to be clear, there's no deal yet. The US has said the talks are incredibly difficult, but to supporters of normalization, the prize here is huge. In the words of one Israeli newspaper, Saudi-Israel normalization would transform the Middle East. But this push for better Saudi-Israel relations has left Hamas wanting to derail the process. Uh, Hamas officials have mentioned that they want to send a message to, um, their, to Arab leaders that they can't be ignored, that Arabs can't just make uh, deals with Israel and expect to get peace. Iran had a message too. This is its supreme leader in early October, before the Hamas attack. Countries that use the gamble of normalization with the Zionist regime as a method for themselves will lose, and a loss awaits them. They are making a mistake. Zionist regime is a reference to Israel. Iran refuses to use Israel's name. It also denies being behind the Hamas attack. And America says it's not seen evidence that it was. And if Iran and Hamas have points to make on normalization, so does Israel. Since the attack, its US ambassador has urged everyone who has a stake in peace and normalization in the Middle East should support an outcome that would deal a blow to Iran and its proxies. To Israel, to the UN, the US, the UK, the EU, and many others, no reason can justify this mass murder of civilians, this war crime. But 
in quite different ways, Hamas and America both say normalization was a factor in why this attack happened now. America and Israel's desire for normalization is matched by Hamas's desire to stop it. For now, though, Israel is in shock, in mourning and at war. Normalization will have to wait.